Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and I'm building the back of a commercial street for behind my station. The second building on the street is starting to take shape. In this video, I'm going to show how I added the window frames, and how I made this eyebrow roofed window element, and share how I could have made it better. Let's get straight into it, and take a look at the windows. There are a lot of windows on this building, and in 11 different sizes. I draw the frames in Inkscape, and print them onto A4 sticky label. The frame elements are a quarter of a millimetre wide. I leave a 0.6mm border around the inside of the window, and then a further bit of space to ensure there is plenty of surface to use to glue it to the building. I use waste acetate from packaging as the glazing. Today, I'm using the window from a chocolate snowman box. Let's do this small window by sticking it onto here, and then onto here. I do one window at a time, because it's easier to use this method with labels that are freshly stuck down. I cut the window from the label, and stick it to the acetate. I then gently slice all across the horizontal lines of the window frame, right across the whole label. Turn it around, and slice right across all the vertical lines. The aim is to slice through the label, but not the acetate. I then pick out the grey interior of the frame, by peeling away the small square that is left after slicing it. And here is a window, with a tiny quarter of a millimetre frame element. I simply cut this out, and then use PVA glue to mount the window behind the hole in the wall. That works well enough. The two doors each have a small window above them. I make this in the same way, before mounting the printed door onto the acetate with PVA glue. With the door on top of the window element, I thought it didn't quite look right when seen in 3D. I cut this tiny 1mm wide piece of white paper, and used PVA glue to mount it above the door to represent the door frame. It is subtle, but it now looks a lot better. Here's a size comparison to a standard Lego brick. I want this building to be as sturdy as possible. The front wall is already two layers of half mm card. With all the windows in place, I use PVA glue to mount a 1mm inner wall in place. I wear the whole thing down with a pile of books. I glue the side elements in pairs to make them 2mm thick. This one has the chimney outline on the outer layer, but not the inner. This gives me a surface onto which I can glue the roof later. I was looking at the prototype building in Bradford, and I realised that the curved bit at the top was actually an eyebrow window, with a white painted surround, and not a stone pelmet. So I sliced this part off. I had left a 2mm gap on either side of the outer texture into which the sides could slot. I also cut several rectangular support pieces to hold things square. I used PVA glue to hold the structural elements in place, and then wrapped the texture around the edge and used PVA to hold it in place. By folding the texture right round like this, any unsightly card edges are avoided, and the building looks a bit more solid. I managed to tear this side whilst working on the windows. I used a grey watercolour pencil to try and hide the glaring white edges of the paper, and this worked out okay in the end. I printed two rectangles of the same size, each containing part of the front element. This one contains the window, and this one has a 1mm wide border. I cut the inside of the border out, but I leave the outer part in place on the rectangle. I glue the border rectangle on top of the window one. And only once the glue has dried, do I then cut out the border from the double thickness rectangle. This is a great way of getting really thin borders and elements, without battling with warping or twisting card. As ever, I have no idea how an architect would design a roof like this, so I had to make it up as I went along. We know that the roof has a flat front, but curves along the edge that butts up to the main roof. So by measuring along the curve of the building's front, we know how wide the roof needs to be. You can use string to measure, but I use the measure path tool in Inkscape. The roof needs to be 55.498mm wide. I can also use Inkscape to measure the distance from the front wall to where the roof meets the main roof, 16.31mm. I drew a circle in Inkscape, and then cut off half of it to leave me with a semicircle. I set its width to 55498 and its height to 16.31mm. Once stuck to half mm card and cut out, I had a shape that I hoped would make the roof. I introduced a curve into the card, and placed it around the front element. I couldn't be 100% sure, but it looked like it would work out okay. I used the sticky label method to make a window, and then used a layer of 1mm card to support the structure. 
I coloured the back of the window black with a sharpie marker before placing it onto the building. The roof slots around the window element and chimney. I hadn't taken the depth of the card that makes up the roof into account when calculating the size of the curved roof, so it was a bit too deep. I just cut off a slice from the straight end to make it the right depth. I used PVA glue along both edges and held it in place with tape whilst the glue set. I tiled the main roof with strips of Scale Scenes roof tile like normal. I used Scale Scenes tarmac texture in the same shape as the curved roof and attached it with PVA. A small 1.5mm wide strip of tarmac was added across the top. I think that this roof looks brilliant from most angles. It almost matches the prototype in Bradford perfectly. Considering I just made this up as I went, I'm really pleased with the result. However, from the front, just here, you can see that the sides bulge out slightly. I didn't notice this until it was almost finished. It's obvious when photographing the building from certain angles. I realise now that the shape I used wasn't right. I squashed a semicircle to make the roof, which has the effect of making the edge parts quite flat. I should have used a different method. If I had started off by making a rectangle of the correct dimensions, and then scaled a perfect circle until its top and edges matched the rectangle, I could then cut the rectangle from the circle to be left with a roof which curved better. I would have had a slice of a perfect circle rather than a squashed semicircle. You can see that the flat bulges of my roof in red would have been avoided. I think this green shape would have been a better one to use, but it's too late now. There is always something to learn in this game, and that is its beauty. You may have noticed this door floating up here. It's a fire escape of course, and unless I want the residents of Chandwell to break their legs when escaping a fire, I'm going to have to construct a fire escape for them. This will be quite a challenge, so watch out for that next week. Here's a closer look at how I make window frames from sticky labels. If you'd like early access to my videos and behind the scenes updates, please consider joining my channel. There are details in the description. Until next week's fire escape then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.